Okay, so you guys, you can see the paper and the photograph too? Mm -hmm. Yes, you mm -hmm. can. I know you I, can. I know I can. <laughs> Mary, don't answer that. Okay, look, <laughs> I'm drawing my little line around the edges just to make sure that I don't compose, that I compose to the part of the page that's actually going to show in the frame. And then I just how many uh, times have you told us that and how many times have I never not done it? That's why I keep saying it. I'm just waiting. If you if you do it, then I'll quit. <laughs> so you can see I'm just trying to place the whole thing there on the I don't know why the camera is doing that. Um, just trying to place the whole thing. Um, initially. A little I'm a little different than I usually do, but yep, there it goes. Uh, one thing was I've that, got Zoom. What, Go ahead. well, the leaves no, the never mind. kind of helpful to me, like, because they're, I, yeah, I don't know. Is that going to keep doing that the whole time? Maybe. I, focusing. Keep focusing. Yeah. The camera refocusing, but it doesn't usually do that. Um, anyway, the leaves were kind of helpful to me to try to figure out where things really were. And now I'm just trying to do kind of a contour drawing of the flowers. And one thing that's a bad mistake that I've done many times is starting on the left and then starting on the right and trying to make things meet up in the middle. So it's better to, I don't know what I'll do here because I did record this a few weeks ago now, but um, hopefully I'll do the right thing and keep going from the left to the right. But um, yeah, but anyway, those leaves were really good markers for me because they're more delineated than really the uh, some of the other things so trying to meet in the middle of your drawing is really difficult it's really better to go from kind of get the whole thing and then go from one side to the other the, in the ideal world you know you would really not go beyond that boundary you set there she is mm -hmm. that boundary that you set initially uh, but i think i do have to make some changes coming up here seem to recall that things didn't all go like I thought they would. These were my flowers. Wow. Yeah. From your garden down there or in Vermont? No, they have not looked this good since I moved them here. Yeah. It's a beautiful bouquet. But maybe this will be the year they really do well. This will be their third year, so. Maybe it's a little ridiculous to get into those little purple flowers. And yeah, my painting doesn't, but I don't know if this is just some trick of the whole. Um, oh, oh, wow. Filming, but my. my my photograph doesn't seem like it's exactly the same proportion as my paper. And I don't know if I made a mistake or if um, it's just something about the perspective of it in the, on the computer. Yeah. How big is the paper? Um, it's that 12 by 16. Yeah, and also I you can tell that I've got the vase crooked. It's partly that is from being off to the side. Um, so like directly in front of my painting is my pastels and I'm off to the right of the paper. Kind of look staring straight ahead at the computer screen and painting sideways. Um, I entered this in a show here, uh, a show of celebrating spring. <laughs> So I uh, did try to do a careful drawing. I don't know yet if it's been accepted. But... Much better. But this is a case where I'm using, I'm looking at a lot of negative spaces to figure out where things go. Unlike, you know, the drawing I did last week where I didn't really have any negative spaces to show to go around that statue. Why are you shaking? 
Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I did a pretty good job here making everything fit in. Mm -hmm. And I just, the, I'm just darkening the leaves. I'm not going to do all the light and shadow and all the flowers to start with, but just having those leaves there just kind of helping me know where things belong. Um, contour drawing is a really good thing to practice. It's um like you could what you sh would what I would say is my initial drawing is a gesture drawing, and now this is a contour drawing where I'm really looking at the outlines of things and trying to get them in, kind of precisely. And then the next step for drawing, if I was to carry it further with drawing, would be light and shadow. Mm -hmm. So that when I taught drawing, that's the order I taught it in was um, gesture, contour, and then light and shadow. But something like this, I mean, for me, this, I don't want to spend the time it would take to draw in all those shadows on the flowers. Um, but that's why a lot of times I'll start with the uh, shadow colors first. Because if I get the shadow colors in the wrong place, that's not so bad as if I get the light in the wrong place, because I can always make things lighter. And I, I, you know, I know you can see that I've made drawing mistakes. I always do. I try not to, but I just do. And sometimes I'm just shocked at what how bad my drawing mistakes are. But you should know, I am always trying to draw it right. <laughs> and if I don't fix it, it's because I didn't never noticed. This one I do that before the second of uh, the second 30 minutes, I redraw the whole thing. So this was not the, this was just the first drawing, the first draft. But however your first drawing is, your paintings always end up beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're a woman of style and taste. <laughs> or is it wealth and taste? That's uh -huh. what it is, wealth and taste. Wealth and taste. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, she got the taste for it. But I'm still, you know, working on the whole thing. I'm kind of coming around. I'm not spending too long in any one place, just, you know, trying to make it better. Jean, it amazes me that you keep track of what pedal you're working on. There's so much in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how you can track. Which parts well? Oh, well, it's mostly the outlines, as you can see, mm -hmm. the contours, the lines where it meets the um, edge of the, I mean, the background. And then that's what really helped me too, was just those leaves that really helped me keep track of stuff. So I have painted quite a few peonies. Um, you know, I always say you don't want to remember how you did things, but you know, it, it, experience does count <laughs> kind of understanding their structure and that's the biggest understatement i've ever heard experience experience does count. <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes i think experience is a problem because people repeat things they don't look at things freshly because they're relying too much on what they know and not what they see so and i don't want to know how to do what I'm doing I don't want to because then I'm bored for one thing and mm -hmm. um yeah I don't want to be bored and also I think it's boring when you repeat yourself so um but yeah so it's kind of a I don't know it's kind of a mix I mean it's just kind of a mix oops just roamed right off the page there And I think I, oh, here we go. Okay, good. I started it again. Okay, so. So now I've got a pastel in my hand and look, I'm not doing what I said because I'll tell you why. Now I remember that I started with the light on the flowers because I wanted to be sure I didn't make the background too light. So because my flowers, which were intentionally, you know, set up against a white background when I took the photograph, um, yeah, I just wanted to be sure I got that background dark enough. So I started with some of my lightest lights.
And the brightest light you can make is um, in pastels is white, yellow with white on top of it, but that's coming back over it with, I don't know if that's white or a really light blue. I can't really tell. I usually try to save my white to last, but I might not have because of that wanting it to stand out against the background. Yeah, so it looks like that's what I'm doing is putting in a lot of the little light areas. Instead of what I said, I usually do. I'm just laughing because you're learning so much from this. I know, I always learn something from what I'm... Okay, and look, there's the background. So forget about that, always painting in the dark side of the flowers first. I never do anything always. I find this drawing very intimidating. Uh, because it's still so yeah. unfinished or? It looks no, this, it's just complicated. Thank you. That'll that'll do. Yes. Very complicated. Yes. Oh, that's called right there, picking up a different pastel and not realizing it, but just deciding whatever. <laughs> I think I dropped it. That was it. That that's one was also pretty. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice to get as much, I mean, I just, I love the red paper. So this sounds a little paradoxical too, but I, I am, I am trying to get it covered up, you know, as quickly as I can, because it's so annoying that to figure well, out. Your why process. was your choice of the red paper, Janine? Why? Well, that's all I happen to have at the moment, <laughs> but oh. I also like the way the warmth comes through and I, I just, oh. um, uh, and okay. I think, uh, well, I'm, no, I'll just keep going. I, I have lots of reasons always. Um, I think maybe it's from back in the days of always doing my uh, oil paintings on that um, burnt sienna background. I just oh. really like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. But I want it covered up right away. Cause, so it's not like bugging me and distracting me from what colors things are really going to be. Yeah. So there you can see I started to, then came back with the lighter color in my background right next to those flowers because it's easier for me to compare two things that are touching than to compare things that are further apart. Especially with all that red paper in between, I need to come back and um, it's a doorbell. Um, start right next to it. Oh, it's quiet to you. Yeah, it's so quiet here because they went for a walk. The light's coming from the right? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a north light. So yeah, it's the opposite of what I usually paint. But um, in my house in Barrie, it was just the most beautiful north light, but it came from the right. I mean, to set something up like this, I had to have it coming in from the right. Good point. I hardly ever paint things with the light coming from that direction. Good color. Well, you did, the, you did this in Barry? No, I took the photograph in Barry. Oh, I've had the photograph a while and hadn't painted it. And I just I did it right this minute because I wanted to enter that show and I didn't have anything. So we'll see if I get in the show or not. Was this a show you entered before? I entered it last year um, and because it was in Newport, I entered the only beach painting I had done of a Newport beach, but it was not my best one. And I didn't get so it. So the color you used before this one, was that gray or is that some kind of green and I just don't see it as green? Oh, it's really gray, yeah. But I think it's that, I think it's that um, 640.3, which is turquoise green, I think, or... Um, that's, I don't know many numbers of my pastels, but that's one I have to buy over and over again because I like it so much. And so I'm pretty sure that's what that is, 640.3. Is it a Rembrandt? Yes, it is a Rembrandt. Sorry. Yeah, that's the Rembrandt numbering. The, the, the color number is the first three and the points are the value. 
I think they make a point one now too of that color. Uh, they added a bunch of point ones like about 10 years ago. So it seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and and like, you know, the one I use all the time, the 508.3, <laughs> the Prussian blue, there's a 508.1 now. So mm -hmm. it just, you just have to have the darks. If you're not mm -hmm. going to use black, you have to have the darkest ones you can get. Um, and how about that deep teal that you're using? What's that? Um, uh, are you talking about this or? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, now that makes me wonder, maybe that's the 640. You I was wondering. Ron, you mean the teal that's right. the this one, down below? This one right here? Yeah. Oh, and here too. That's maybe the that turquoise green. I bet that's it, actually, and this might be, I don't, I think it's a that, green, but it's a really grayish, a greenish, a grayish green. And I think okay. you're right, Fran. I think this is the 640. You actually made a color chart, right, Fran? So you know. I did. Yeah. I'll have to go look at it. Yeah. That's um. I I mean I, I've, my color chart is long lost, but that was so helpful to me to make a color chart of my pastels. Well, and I took your suggestion of making two color charts: one on the this terracotta paper and another on gray paper because the yeah. colors look really different. I haven't looked at those in a long time. I should put them up on the wall since I now have a wall. I well, yeah, you should. Year. It's nice to have things like that on your wall. That's so organized. Yeah, I never made it on more than one piece of paper. I definitely did it on like the neutral paper because the, the one they give you with the box, I didn't even know if they give them to you anymore, but it was on white paper. You couldn't tell anything about it. So, so if you've never made a color chart, it's really helpful because then you know what colors you're missing. So up until then, it was like... Um, I was I would use up my favorite colors, but I wouldn't even know what my favorite colors were. So I was always missing my favorite colors. And then once I made my color chart and understood how the numbering system worked for Rembrandt's, um, it was just a huge help. So if any of you that don't have that end up buying a brand new set of pastels, do that before you mess them up. Yeah, make your little <laughs> color chart. It's not like a big onerous production. It's just, you know, a, I mean, you don't have to make it perfect, just enough enough color on there so you can see what the color is and the number. I don't think I even, like, I don't know the names particularly. I just know the numbers. Because then when you go to the art supply store, or especially if you're trying to order online, which a lot of places don't have open stock Rembrandt anymore. You used to could count on that. But um, they don't have it in any of the art supply stores, even here. So um, that way you can order, you know, six of those 508.1s. That blue is a great color that you're using now. Yeah, that's just a Rembrandt. I love that. The only non-Rembrandt in this picture is that purple that's under my arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one. Yes. And what kind of pastel is that? I knew that was coming. Okay, I'm looking right now. It's a. Uh, is it a Terry? No, it's not. In fact, it's um. That I have a It is a Jack Richardson. It was their set oh. of pilots, and um, I just to me it was um. It's not my, my it's not in there now. Now it's uh -huh. something else. But it was the best collection of violets. I looked at a lot of times violets will look really gray. Mm -hmm. So um, oh. I thought that from, you know, the best I could tell online, it seemed like mm -hmm. the best collection of the color. Yeah, it's very saturated. Yeah. And then what I did was I broke them in half and I put, but I've used it on, I think I might need to buy a new box now. Mm -hmm. But all these boxes are full of pastels. Wow. <laughs> oh, my box is just a mess. As, I have no, have no idea what any of them are and they're all mixed. I have Terry Ludwig's and Rembrandt's and all kinds in the boxes together. Yep, we've talked about it's that too. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. You're a mess, Barb. You sure paint well, so I don't think I would change anything. About I am it. a mess. <laughs> well, I try to keep my 
I mean, I do have some good pastels mixed in with my Rembrandts, but the problem is when you pick them up too soon, you wish you hadn't, mm -hmm. except for that purple where I have nothing else that's going to do that. So I use that purple under what the red flowers, the red flower and shadow is going to be. I only have the one rule. The square ones are used after I've used the round ones. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, like I say, it's really working for you. Thanks. I had a lot of trouble with that yellow iris. Mm. Um, that one that's kind of facing us. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, if I went working from a photograph, you know, like maybe I would have pulled that yellow iris out of there mm -hmm. um, or turned it or something. That's, I did take a lot of photographs the day I had this um, bouquet. Um, Is that from your garden? Yeah. Pretty, very, very pretty. Thank you. Oh yeah, Judy, you missed that I did the house just down the street from you. The pictures you did one day up there went of the peonies of the house next door to you or something oh that garden huh. garden mm -hmm. that one that, yeah. there's some in here you'll see it oh. i mean i uh i moved the flowers around a little bit in photoshop before i started yeah. put them closer together and I think I probably said this before, I'm sure I have, but mm -hmm. if I was painting outdoors, I don't, I just move things in my eye, in my mind. Mm -hmm. But somehow when I'm painting from a photograph, I kind of like to move it, get it all like I want it before I start. For better or worse, sometimes I feel like I make the composition worse by messing with it. And I can hardly, I can hardly find a photograph I want to paint from that I didn't take. Um, so... And I would say if you're take when you are taking photographs, be sure don't don't zoom in too much to, so that you can crop out stuff later. Don't zoom it right into where you think that's exactly what I want. Good point. So now it doesn't look so complicated, right? See how I simplified it. <laughs> I think you know they're flowers, right? I mean, they're in a vase. What else could they be? I love it. it. To, to me, it's finished. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so think how long you work on yours. So I can't finish it. <laughs> so, Janine, you're probably sick of this question. But <laughs> no, I'm not. What That's what keeps me in business. <laughs> what made you see blue? Where, where you put in the deeper blues around the bottom? Well, I, you know, I don't want to use gray, although one of the most beautiful pastel, uh, paint, a painting of peonies I ever saw was almost all in grays. Mm. Uh, but I don't want to use gray. So I'm always asking myself, well, what kind of blue color is that? And, you know, I would say, well, it's blue. So I'll just start it really blue. And then I can always pull it down later um you and, see blue you know, what <laughs> well i always exaggerate but also i know that it's going to be a cool color uh, well you know what i got to take all that back it's not electric light so mm -hmm. i might i might be painting too much what i know in this situation and not enough what i'm seeing but i guess i just like i think blue and then i just make it blue and i had to I wanted to make a difference between these two, um, even though mm -hmm. there's not as much difference as I made, but I wanted to start with a big difference between them. So um, that's why I ended up with this really electric blue. But it, you know, it mm -hmm. won't stay that way. It's oh, I know. First, it's just the first, the first draft. And I, I like to make a big, exciting first draft statement you know first statement right um, we noticed yeah i know right <laughs> it's just it's just my exuberant personality you can see it in the way i dress <laughs> mm -hmm. you know blue jeans and flannel shirts and a black sweatshirt every mm -hmm. day of my life no anyway i just 
I always feel like it's easier to tone things down than it is to um, psychologically. It's easier as an artist to tone it down later than to start neutral and try to really snap it up and, uh, you know, bang it up later. I just do it first. And even if that color is completely covered up and you don't even know it was there by the end, I just think it gives you that spark of excitement, me, that spark of excitement mm -hmm. as I'm working. You know, and there there it is too. I mean, that vase is not that color. It's it's not going to stay that. It's just, um, and also, I think I don't want to use too many colors to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a lot going on and I haven't really counted the colors, but um, I don't know. Why okay, do I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was long enough. Maybe I, I talked about that long mm -hmm. enough. But look how perfect that red <laughs> is on top of that purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not oil painting, you know. I bet these questions, I think I bet you asked this question, Jane, because you you started with oils. You know, yeah. and it's not oils where you mix it and you blend it. Like if this was an oil painting, I wouldn't have started with that blue. I would have mixed something together, but because mm -hmm. it's pastels, I'm gonna mix it right on the paper over uh -huh. time. So I put down the blue and then because I don't feel like I can see what I'm doing at all until I get the whole thing covered. I need to get it all covered for better or worse. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I am um, I would be more worried about getting the value wrong. As long as I can get the value right, how dark or light something's supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, then I'm not so worried that my color is wackadoodle. But I sure wouldn't want like right in here to use a color that was too light mm -hmm. or here. And see, I wow. made my background too light, I realized. So I had to come back and make it a little darker. Did you read about that Kaczynski that was sold $45 million? No. <laughs> wow. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. $45 million. $45 million. What? Was it, it was a on the collection? front page of the arts? Huh? There was a story about her on the front page of the art section of Sunday's Times. Was $45 it, million dollars for a painting. Was it, it not was for a private to Finley's, uh, uh, And it looks just like what Janine has on that screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what it looked like. I'll take a million. <laughs> I don't, I don't blame million. you. You can have everything I've ever painted for a million dollars. Was it a Kandinsky or somebody else? I didn't quite catch that, Judy. Yes. Uh-huh. Kandinsky. But Judy, was it a private collector or, or a, a museum? It was um, somebody who had a reparation from the German Nazi regime, and they oh. got uh, the painting back that was owned by their family. Wow. And they put it up for sale immediately, and somebody uh, Asian bought it. Yeah, I was thinking it was probably, I mean, that's who's buying all those paintings. So we'll never see that painting again. No. Nope. Well, Mary and I went to the gardener the other day and it's always sad to go there and see those empty frames where those paintings were stolen and have never surfaced again. Right. Sad. So hard to believe it's never been solved. Yeah, there was just a Netflix series about it, I think. There's been several different films and theories and so on, but well, no maybe paintings. they destroyed them. Maybe they got nervous. Yeah, that's that's the fear. Yeah. <laughs> well, if anybody ever Probably. wants to meet up in Boston, you know, that was an easy trip for me to go there for the day and spend five mm -hmm. hours at the art museum. Did you spend five hours? At yeah, least minimal, at least. Yeah. <laughs> we were there from 10 to 3, so mm -hmm. about, well, maybe 11 to 3. As long as the train cool. Is mm -hmm. You sure have a bold start there. <laughs> I like the green coming in there on the base. Oh, thanks. Well, go bold or go home. <laughs> That's that's her style, and and I work with I've studied with Janine for so long, and 
none of that has floated into me at all. Can you show this? And then I go right back to what I'm doing. <laughs> you know what? Your work is I'm not a very that. good student. And you've gotten very better. And I'm not trying to make people that paint like me. I'm just showing you what I do. I, I know. Make, but I don't really she can't get you to do an outline around the edge of the painting. It's just no hope, Barb. <laughs> oh, that's it. And you, because you won't clean up your box of pastels. <laughs> Oh God, I know it's a sickness. The other no, sickness only... is I can't. The other sickness is I can't get rid of my paintings. My physical therapist saw some of my paintings on my phone, and she said, "Oh, I want to buy one." And I said, "But I can't get." get Wait, rid of you were them. just you told me you were going to turn over a new leaf and give them away. Uh, uh, oh. Yes, I did give one away. One. <laughs> one. You're having your party in the spring. You told us. No, I'm not having a party. I did give oh. one to a woman who um, I know, and I had painted her house in the winter, and I, she may move. And I said, oh, I want to have you. You have to have this so that you can put it on your wall after you move. <laughs> well, she was glad. I just gave Mary three. <laughs> so it's true. It's a sickness. I don't know what it is. You're a hoarder. Cleaned up. Definitely. You know what? I personally find that it feels better to get rid of paintings. I have felt so much better ever since I was in Vermont for that workshop and I gave you guys paintings. Mm. I'm so well, I did give, I did give, right? mm -hmm. yeah. I I did give another one away. That's true. I never forgot one if you have an extra one. <laughs> I just can't believe you didn't get one, Judy. I'm so sorry. No, nope, did not. Sorry. I don't know how that happened either. Well, she's really focused when she's painting, and she probably never heard me say it in the you know twenty times I mentioned it. But you know what? My remember my, the, the pick one that the one that I picked out had one on the back. I could give Judy one of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> How do you say? Oh, you mean there were two pieces of paper? Right, and I didn't realize that. Aha. Uh -huh. Judy was hiding, hiding by, all by herself in that back corner. Oh yes, my gosh. she was. She made it when, so hard to come his... around and help her. I was hiding. Well, so can we come and help. visit your puppy yet? I had such a good time at that workshop. It was so so soothing to my soul. Oh, it was okay. very nice. I really enjoyed it. It was so good for me too. I love painting with other people. Well, if, if we can work it out, we're going to try to do something in the fall. Oh, good. Yay. It, it does look like we're going to get the room. It doesn't look like you're going to get it? No, it's looking like we are going to get oh, it. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, Same there's something wrong with your mic, John. There's, there's something going on with your mic this week and last week. It's like very hard to understand you. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy with it. With your mic. I have an external yep. mic, just saying. That's improved my sound tremendously. Yep, I got a brand new HP computer. Oh. Mm. Oh, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Made him a Packard, huh? So you can see I'm not finishing anything too much. I'm keeping everything at kind of a similar level of finish. And the good thing about that is that